This is a great conversation. I hope you guys are ready. If you would please put your hands together for our panelists. Enjoy. Hi, hi. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hi. Hello. Please sit down, have a seat. Have a seat. Please sit down. Wow. Wow, so many people. You want to come a little closer? Okay. <laughs> I think we all have, we all fit on this sofa. Oh, sofa, yeah. okay. Okay, I'm coming to you. <laughs> all right. How are you feeling? Good. Yeah? Very Everybody's good? good? Nico is very good. good. Very good, very good. Right? Nico has a very good life work-life balance, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is the quote of the day, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, just want to make a short introduction into this panel. Nico Rosberg, uh, we talked on stage already. And then left to me is Florian Reuter, the CEO of Volocopter, a very exciting startup company that works on an air taxi service. And Carsten Breitfeld, recovering BMW manager and now CEO of Byton. For those of you who don't know Byton, it's Tesla's worst nightmare. It's also working on electric vehicles and uh, wants to launch soon. Uh, and then next uh, to, to Carsten is Lars Krause uh, with Volkswagen. He talked on stage already and he's uh, leading all the autonomous and IT efforts of the Volkswagen Group. And the very last but not least is uh, the CFO, Chief Financial Officer, uh, Celia P, uh, Chief Financial Officer, Head of Product Management of Autonomous, uh, the driving unit of uh, subsidiary of Audi. Mm -hmm. So thanks guys for, for coming here and uh, thanks for talking to me about the future of mobility. So I want to kick off this panel with each of you giving me a short vision of what you think the future of mobility might look like. Very brief, 30 seconds, go. Having choices, flying in the air, driving autonomous whenever you don't want to drive by yourself, and drive actually by yourself when it's really fun driving by yourself. It will be on demand, it will be uh, more env environmental oriented, and it will be very fast. Yeah, if you look back the last 100 years, then mobility added value to individuals, but was a burden for societies mainly yeah, when it comes to pollution, covering space, accidents. In the future, mobility will add value to societies. It will be clean, uh, it will reduce space, it will reduce traffic accidents, and this is a fundamental change. Have the best mobility option available at any point in time, wherever I am in the world. Hopefully, this is going to be the Volocopter very often. <laughs> <laughs> um, I look forward to intelligent mobility chains. Yeah, so I'm at home and I do everything with one app. I say I want to go from A to B. And so the autonomous car comes, brings me to the Volocopter uh, takeoff site. <laughs> I fly to the next city, I land there, and I get the little e-kick scooter to mm -hmm. go 100 meters to my friend's house. <laughs> and so it's this intelligent chain that I'm really looking forward to. It's going to be massive for efficiency. Mm -hmm. Cast, what I think it's really interesting, I, I think we are all following the news around Tesla and you know the struggle the company is in. Uh, we see like the discussion around Elon Musk as a person who might or might not be the CEO in the future of Tesla. Uh, and we see companies struggling to build a brand, a new brand, build mass production around electric vehicles. What makes you at Byton think you can do it? Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's a great experience coming back to, to Munich, um, even if we had to, to found our company out of China. Um, I'm asked many times, um, does it make sense to create a new company, a, a next company to build electric cars? And the clear answer is no, it does not make sense. There are so many cars companies outside, all of them I eventually will be able to build electric cars. But this is not the point. Uh, something else is going on. With, with new technologies like, uh, like uh, intelligence and connectivity, the products will change and the business models will change. So the money in the future will not be earned by selling cars, mm -hmm. but by using the car as a platform, making business with digital data and digital services, and eventually become a, um, a supplier uh, of, of, of mobility, yeah? shared mobility, this will be the business in the, in the future. Now, how to sustain in this area, how to be successful? Um, first of all, even if it's smart and connected, it's still a car. 
and developing and industrialize a car, being able to build it in, in volume out of a process and quality and so on, is not an easy job. It's maybe mm -hmm. one of the most complex things you can do in industry. Mm -hmm. And you have to build a strong team. And this is what we did. The foundation of Biden is still car. Mm. So you also have a production hell, like Elon Musk talks about it? Yeah, I'm, um, I think we should admit that the, the industry in the last 130 years really learned how to produce cars. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea to try to adapt this excellence and not to try to, mm -hmm. uh, to reinvent uh, the car when it comes to the basic technologies. Mm -hmm. How do you think about it? I mean, you have like a very close relationship to German car makers. How do you think about, you know, building a new brand? Because I think this is clearly one thing you are doing in your next chapter of your career right now. Yeah, it's always a, it's always a huge challenge, um, but I would like to move away a, a little bit and just say that our huge advantage in Germany is our experience and knowledge for scaling up new models and new cars that are coming out. That's our competitive advantage as an industry in Germany, mm -hmm. and that's where we really need to make sure that we we use that to win in the mm -hmm. end. Because of course, others are going to do great in doing some startup products, some new inventions, But yeah. I really hope we win because we're the ones who can then bring it to mass market. Mm -hmm. I right? think th this is something Volkswagen <laughs> is specializing yes, in, I mean, right? I mean, I mean, I think Volkswagen has the advantage. We have a strong base. But basically, we have to transform our, our solutions, our business totally mm. in order to make sure that we really uh, somehow reach the co customer requirements of the future. Mm -hmm. so that means basically moving from a hardware-oriented um, structured, process-oriented company to a more open and flexible company. Mm -hmm. And this is also why we work closely together with our colleagues from Audi, for example, to really uh, build up yeah, very flexible relationships mm -hmm. and to work with new methodologies. Yeah. And how this is the way we have to move forward. Yeah. How hard is it, you know, with all the history you guys came from, <laughs> like the diesel crisis and all the turnaround in the company? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, it, it doesn't make sense to look back. Because basically, for mm -hmm. me, it's important that we look that we look into the future and that we have a clear targets for the future mm -hmm. and move. Because if we only if we only deal with the past, basically we will we will not be able to to somehow um, increase speed yeah, and to to really move forward. Yeah, but um, what is a bigger challenge? I would say is really to invest and go more into the software development areas, right? Um, and this is also why, for example, Audi founded us uh, as a separate company, really to focus on software development and really introducing methods and yeah, processes which are not common mm. in the uh, yeah, automotive industry so far. Mm -hmm. And I think this is definitely the bigger challenge for uh, mm -hmm. the automotive mm -hmm. industry. I think it's interesting, how do you do that? I mean, how do you stay an independent startup within such a big, huge very traditional, very like, you know, with all the history company. How, how do you stay innovative? Have, uh, creating a big wall, let's say, right? <laughs> okay. And this is my daily business, actually. <laughs> <laughs> And this is quite hard sometimes, it's okay. true. But yeah. there are also a lot of benefits, right? I mean, we have a, a, for example, we do not have to care so much about financing, right? I mean, it's a secure, credible environment we are in, and this really helps very mm -hmm. often. Also, if we are ordering parts and all these kind of things, yeah, we have a big automotive company in our back. Mm. Uh, that definitely helps. But on the other side, I mean, uh, Volkswagen realized that they have to change something, Obviously. and they have yeah. to give us the freedom, <laughs> otherwise it will not work. Yeah? Mm. And so far, I have to say, it's really working very good. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, sorry, uh, we moved from a hardware company to a software company. And basically, one of the, our key elements are project houses, for example. Mm -hmm. That means being in Wolfsburg in a very big development center is not always innovative. So we have okay. to find new spaces, new spots, mm -hmm. and that's what we do together. Like what? Yeah, like moving to Munich, for example, and staying here, working here okay. in a different mm -hmm. environment, and also using um, yeah, software development methods like Scrum to really increase the speed. Mm -hmm. How do you look like from your startup perspective, you know, at you know, major companies, big companies trying to do innovative stuff as a startup who is like doing innovative so stuff I, I all the time? A, I have a background with a big corporate as well, right? Mm -hmm. So I know, I, I, I think I know what I'm talking about and where I'm coming from. Um, <laughs> look, I think there's certain technology and market constellations where it's extremely beneficial to be a startup mm -hmm. and you have much better chances for success being a startup <coughs> in some circumstances. Um, for us, you know, we are um, building a safety-critical vehicle, 
So first of all, we need to gain credibility by building a brand, but also by partnering with the right uh, people. And uh, we have Daimler and Intel investing in us, mm -hmm. which you know helps tremendously when mm. approaching you know uh, air safety uh, authorities around mm -hmm. the world. Um, we have deliberately decided to join up with a car maker because we with see Daimler is one of Daimler, your investors, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we see that um, you know the natural choice people think is, is Airbus or Boeing, but mm -hmm. um, the reality is that we expect volocopters to be used and uh, innovative, uh, innovated in a way that is much closer to today's car industry than to today's airplane manufacturing. Mm -hmm. When you look at airplanes, you know, they have models that run for decades and decades. And uh, with volocopters, you know, we expect them to be constantly upgraded. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, all of these elements will, will play a role. Mm -hmm. Coming back to your question, um, what do we use from Daimler, for example? It's the brand, it's the credibility, but it's also the manufacturing expertise. So mm -hmm. when we are now setting up our industrialization process, we hope to greatly benefit from the knowledge that they already have. We mm -hmm. don't have to reinvent that part of the game. Mm -hmm. We are reinventing mm -hmm. sufficiently enough on the other spaces. Okay, interesting. And you think, I mean, for those who don't know the company, it's like a company that builds flying cars. Uh, and it's really interesting because like autonomous cars is one of the major and hot topics right now. And it's like, you know, Cities are trying to build the infrastructure, and everybody's asking, you know, who would be there first? Like, do we see, you know, flying cars first, do you think? <laughs> to some degree, flying cars are easier to implement than uh -huh. you know, autonomous, uh, autonomous, uh, no, autonomous air taxis are easier to implement than autonomous cars, to some degrees. Okay. Because the environment we are operating in is less complex. Uh -huh. right? We don't have all these Because you just have the birds flying around. It's, and it's, you have cooperative and non-cooperative members of the airspace, as we say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yes, a bird is a challenge. Um, so, but it's, it's similar technologies that we apply, mm -hmm. but I, you know, we have much more space in the air. Mm -hmm. So for example, when we conducted our first ever autonomous flight in Dubai last year, we could do that with today's technology because we had a secure airspace. The bird's taken out of the equation okay. on that case. But mm -hmm. um, you know, it's much easier for us to start, let's say, learning than exploring that space than mm -hmm. it is on the ground. Mm -hmm. So I would expect autonomous um, air vehicles, which are already in the air, if you look at the A380 and so on, they are pretty much flying mm -hmm. for the longest part mm -hmm. autonomous um, um, very, very soon. We mm -hmm. expect that development to um, occur around 2025 when we will be starting to offer first autonomous mm. routes. You're also an investor in a company that builds flying cars. The such op to opposition. Say, right? It's I've the opposition, the right? Opposition, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. We're taking on Volocopter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, so the company I've invested in is Lilium, which is actually uh, headquartered not, not far mm -hmm. from here. Mm -hmm. But it's a bit of a different concept because they have, uh, they've developed uh, um, electric jet propulsion. And, and so, but it's also a mm -hmm. VITAL, vertical takeoff and landing. But with the... Um, with the benefit of also being able to go really long distance because it turns into an airplane actually mm -hmm. in the way it's uh, the concept is made. Okay, yeah. cool. What I think is interesting about Byton, it's a Chinese company and in Silicon Valley where I live, everybody's asking themselves, what do the Chinese do next? Where do they invent next? What area are they going into next? And it's obviously a very interesting fight for digital supremacy, such to say we see between the United States and China. How do you look at this? I mean, with your background, you know, 20 years at BMW, you know, now working in China, do we, st do we stand a chance? Yeah, first of all, it's important to understand Byton is a global brand. It's a global team and it's a global company, but founded and rooted in China. This is mm -hmm. a bit slightly different from being a Chinese company. And the reason is, if you want to do smart cars, you will not be able to do them in Germany but you will not be able to do them in California neither and not in China. You need mm -hmm. all the elements because if it comes to premium car design and concept and quality, there's no alternative to do it here in Munich where all the big OEMs are around. Don't try to do um, a modern and advanced UI with car people. This will not work. There you need the, the people from consumer electronics, from Apple, from Google. So this one you have to do in California. And if you, if you want to produce uh, in volume on uh, acceptable cost and, and be successful in China, you have to be in China. Mm -hmm. So you need all the elements and you have to build mm -hmm. a global company. Mm -hmm. Now, why it's interesting to do this out of China? You find four elements in China which, which really drives um, this new technology and new business model. The first one is it's a big market, more than 30 million cars a year. 
Second one is in China, everything is moving very fast, mm. very fast. Mm. Third one is there's a lot of money in entrepreneurs who are prepared to invest in dreams and ideas and teams in a very early stage, a lot of money. And the fourth one is there is a very strong political commitment mm -hmm. and the chance to decide and make things happen in a very short period mm. of time. And those elements mm -hmm. together makes China a very attractive place to, to shape the future of mobility. Mm -hmm. And to some degree, I'm sorry to say it will happen there. Mm -hmm. So does the Chinese government knock on Biden's door like every second day and, t you know, is there like a knowledge exchange? Because <laughs> I think this is like what every other company is doing in China. Let's put it, let's put it this way. In, to be successful in China, you have to be connected and yeah. you have to be connected with governments. Yeah. So we are rooted in Nanjing. We, uh, Nanjing government is one of, an, uh, uh, one of the investors in our company. Hmm. In our B round funding now, FAW, the first auto works, I think you know this guy's quite, quite well, well yes. your joint venture partner. <laughs> mm. uh, they became lead investor. And this basically mm -hmm. means that the Chinese government is investing in you, which mm -hmm. gives you access to many things and gives you a life, lifelong guarantee, if you want, for your company. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, this is very important. Mm. You've been to China as well, Nico, right? So what, how were your experience like? China was incredible. I went to see uh, the NEO headquarters, which is then a, sort of a competitor. Well, no, it is a direct competitor, isn't it, I suppose, yeah. And it's, um, it's unbelievable. I mean, they're, they're really, really pushing the boundaries. And even in quality, they're now, they're getting there. Yeah, mm. I, was very, I was quite impressed, because mm. it's not so far away anymore. And <coughs> so it's really a, a big, big threat in, in all sense of the word, what they're doing out there in China. And mm. also very impressive was, I went into a parking garage, and there was, it was absolutely loaded with electric charging stations. Mm. There, I don't think something like that yeah. exists in Europe. Mm -hmm. I don't mm. think they know what would happen if everybody charges at the same time. <laughs> probably the whole, <laughs> the, whole city, the whole city would probably go dark, dark instantly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that they haven't figured out yet, yeah. but they've planned the infrastructure ahead at least. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this was something I wanted to talk to you uh, about, Lars, because you are working on all these e-mobility solutions, like an e-caddy, like an e-bike. Uh, and I think it's an interesting question how cities could actually work with technology companies. I mean, this is something you probably think about as well. So what can cities do to enable all these e-mobility services? I mean, being charging, just being one. Yeah, I think at the end you need three things. Yeah, you need, um, of course, you need the infrastructure. That's a big issue. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure in meaning? Uh, infrastructure meaning you need to charge the yeah. charging units yeah. as well as uh, sensors um, that are somehow also installed within the infrastructure. And, and this, this would be a job for the cities? That would be, a, yeah, maybe it, it's a job for the governments, for the cities, but as well for, as for private partners. Mm -hmm. We will have private partnerships on that, we are absolutely sure. And um, maybe you will even have new global players providing this. Mm -hmm. And s therefore, I totally agree with you. Um, you need to be successful in all three major regions. That means mm -hmm. basically in China as well as in, in North America as well as in Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, these, um, these new companies will emerge and will provide these infrastructures. This is one thing. Mm -hmm. Second, you need the vehicles, of course. And these vehicles need to be open. They need to be um, in environmental oriented with zero emission. And um, they need to incorporate the, the third thing, the software and the services incorporated. And this is a true challenge. And um, this is why I'm still looking quite um, positively in the future, because I think at the end, Volkswagen should have the strength to combine all three elements. Hmm. We'll see about that. Uh, Celia, how do you <laughs> think about it? end about that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We should. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the expectations, you know, for politics, you know, for cities, so, you know, how can, can all these shareholders, you know, work towards the future of mobility? What are the expectations from the companies? Yeah, I mean, infrastructure, what you said before, it's the same for autonomous driving, right? I mean, having a 5G network everywhere, mm -hmm. yeah, with high bandwidth and low latency, I mean, these are crucial things. Um, and also, I mean, for example, in, in China or even um, other um, Asian cities going the way that they have things specific districts only for autonomous driving, that also makes it easier for introduction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you want to start really in mixed traffic situation with pedestrians, cyclists, everything around you, I mean, this is the most complex situation you can go mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. And therefore, definitely that would help if there would be specific lanes, for example, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but for sure it will be kind of introduction scenarios and um, therefore also in this um, China is definitely investing most probably also in the infrastructure there. Mm -hmm. 
you know, obviously... Um, you are going into the air, you know, it's you don't care. Deal. <laughs> it's simple, it's simple. So when, when we talk to cities, they are totally fascinated and they want this kind of service. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, they have no but clue... But there are also on, on some discussions. They have no clue how to implement it and, you know, mm -hmm. they have a lot of questions, mm -hmm. so we need to address them. Mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of support and open doors everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. I would love to make faster progress. Um, so my urge would be, you know, let's use the, the interest and the positive momentum we have, but increase the speed. Mm -hmm. um, so we can bring this technology to the people faster, mm -hmm. but also so we can leverage the lead position we currently have in Europe for creating a new lead industry here. Mm -hmm. right? We have two mm. very interesting and exciting um, companies based here in Germany. Um, that really have a good shot at, yeah. at uh, creating an entire new industry. Mm -hmm. And I would like to gather all mm -hmm. the support we can, mm -hmm. including the big existing corporates, yeah. Yeah. to use that advantage. Mm. I think it's mainly about being fast and decide something. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. To be honest, I recently had some visits from, from people from Germany, from Deutsche Bundestag, a delegation from Deutsche Bundestag and so on. And they came to see us at Biden in California and asked us, oh, what should we do to improve and to, to make those things happen in Germany? And I told them, look, if you go to China, there are some guys that discuss, then they decide something, and the next day they implement, they execute. Mm -hmm. And all this happens in, in weeks. And uh, the perception in Europe is sometimes we discuss for 10 years, and after 10 years we mm. do 10%. I don't know if the guys like the answer, mm. but we have to work on this. Mm. Uh, on this I mean, on the other hand, we have democracy, right? <laughs> yes, this was exactly the answer. <laughs> But, but I mean, that's also a benefit, <laughs> me, right, compared one, to China. One more just one, just you know, I, I want that. our vehicle yeah. to be safe and the mm -hmm. ecosystem in which we operate to be safe. So if you look at the airspace, even the Chinese, any geography, will look towards the regulatory bodies we have in the US or in Europe. So mm. there is a benefit to it. Mm -hmm. And they will only start this development once we have received our certification here in Germany or in Europe, yeah. IASA. Yeah. So there is a benefit to going about this in a very diligent way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What's your idea, Nico? Are we just too negative about innovation? Should we be more positive and optimistic about the future? Well, it's all, there's also a mentality issue that uh, in, in, in California, you mean about uh, startups and pushing? Yeah. Well, in innovation, California, yeah. nobody is scared about failing as much as they are here in Europe. Mm. We're, we're all much more terrified about, about failure because society sees it as so negative in our society. And in California, it's normal. It's normal to go out there, try, fail, try again. Mm. That's a quite a big difference, but it's almost impossible to change that. I mean, it would take ages and ages. I think mm. we have to find another way around it and try mm. and <laughs> get some more money pumped in there or something else. Or government, try and get yeah. more government support. Uh, that's the, that's the way to do it. I still think it's also better in Silicon Valley if you succeed. <laughs> of course. I mean, everybody's of talking course. about failure, of course, of course. but you're obviously celebrated if you, if you succeed. So. I want to, you know, close this panel uh, with a very brief question to every one of you. I think, you know, you all got to know each other a little bit, you know, even in our short discussion. So I wanted to ask you, who would you start a company with from this panel? Can I ask, I just Go. do one more question before that. Yeah. Uh, in Biden's opinion, um, because you've done e-mobility very, very much, and I think it's a question that's very relevant to all of us here, how much more sustainable is electric mobility in the big picture. Yeah, I know locally it's zero emissions, huge, different, awesome. Big picture, A to Z, how much more sustainable, um, of course, don't elaborate too much in, in simple form, uh, is electric mobility, please? I think we would all like to know your opinion on that. I think we Thanks. have to differentiate the current situation and the future. <laughs> in the current situation, the biggest advantage is, as you said, the emissions are generated still, but not within the cities, not where people are living, maybe in other places. On the long run, the whole energy business has to be sustainable. And this is no, has nothing to do with cars. The, the energy um, industry has to transform. And the more this happens and the more we go towards sustainable energy, the more sustainable will, will electromobility be. Mm -hmm. So electromobility is the gateway to more sustainability thanks yeah. to the energy um, it supply becoming more renewable. Correct. It's yeah? one mm -hmm. of, That's one where one the of big the potential then is. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very so good. Two people first starting a company here. I see like some very we're, good we're, vibrations we're here. Up, no? Great. Good. Okay, we okay. found the first uh, partnership. Done. <laughs> Florian. Um, so uh, you know, I believe everyone on this panel, um, you have made a great selection, has actually huh. something to contribute to, okay. to my personal plans. But you that. have to make a decision. And you now, can't and, and say everybody. That's me to boring. That. Don't Look, be boring. I followed your earlier conversation with Nico, and he <laughs> talked about having the best vehicle and matching it up with the best pilot. So I would love to, you know. 
try that out and, and see what that combination would bring. You, you need the most crazy pilot. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, part I'm, of it. I'm in. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, the same answer. I could choose him because I need test drivers and maybe access to capital markets. I could choose him because we want to go to the air in the future as well. It's future oh, mobility, okay. not cars. Mm -hmm. And I would choose those two colleagues because there's still a lot of synergies with the traditional industry. If I Kay. really have to, cho uh, to choose one, then I would choose this colleague here, <laughs> because this might be a very innovative approach than going to the air. He's really diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm already partnering with Silvia, so we yeah. are already a, a, okay. a team. A no, you have to choose another partner, linked. obviously. <laughs> so basically, but Nico maybe could help us to really enforce our cultural really change, popular. to bring speed in our change. Uh, in our company to really focus on transportation solutions. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm visiting your headquarters in a couple of days, actually. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So uh, let's see what can be done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking. <laughs> yeah, same answer. I mean, I uh, still believe that we did the right decision, but nevertheless, so um, when we go up in the air, maybe, then there's uh, also potential to extend. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for the discussion. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. <laughs> Let's give it up to the panel. Thank you so much. Woo!